been a lot of discussions uh, about what scare people, and the number one phobia, hands down, is a fear of clowns. Hello there. It's me, Jack. Didn't expect me, did you? Well, I'm here to tell you all about Halloween Horror Nights. <laughs> Welcome back to Expedition Haunts and our coverage on the history of Halloween Horror Nights. Make sure you check out our early years history and let's get straight into it. Not afraid of the dark? You don't know Jack. Look out for the new Halloween Horror Nights 10, only at Universal Studios. The second decade of Halloween Horror Nights would have a focus on original creative content rather than the use of intellectual properties. Many believe this was due to the cost from setting up a brand new second park at the resort, Islands of Adventure. The outcome though saw the creation of the most beloved content and icons ever created for a Halloween event. Halloween Horror Nights 10 would shape the future of the event. In late August, by the famous Universal Globe at the front of the park, a small sign stood. Beware of the Demented Clown. Universal was conducting a test to determine the scare factor of an upcoming Halloween Horror Nights character and testing guest reactions. It was the first time Jack the Clown would meet the public. <laughs> Jack would be played, and still is, by actor James Keaton, who had played the role of Beetlejuice within the resort and would for over 18 years. The first makeup tests were conducted in the Hitchcock trailer behind the attraction before he was let loose on the public. Jack was also let loose in downtown Orlando where he visited multiple locations, including Lake Eola. The clown would have an elaborate backstory and Universal knew instantly they were onto a winner. If you want to find out more on Jack's backstory, check out our video on Shadybrook. Jack was used heavily in marketing on every medium possible at the time, Jack would literally be everywhere. 19 Nights of Horror were open to guests in the year 2000. Five houses and an increased four unique scare zones, two shows and two haunted rides, as well as the return of the parade. Universal had successfully continued its tradition of making the event bigger and scarier. The five houses this year included Anxiety in 3D inside Soundstage 22 and had a video game set in. Also in the same soundstage was another house called Total Chaos. Jack did not have his own house this year though, surprisingly. The house was actually the creation of Dr. Rich Oddfellow, Jack's nemesis. It featured a highly detailed facade of a clown face, which you entered through as you visited Sting Alley. Once inside, clowns would attack you from all angles. The final two houses were Dark Torment, a really interesting concept where Earthquake's pre-show would be a cue for the house. You would ride the usual subway tram and experience the attraction, but right at the end Jack would pop up and tell guests they did not survive and were now dead, and welcome guests to his very own hell. After disembarking, guests would enter the house via their own grave. The Earthquake queue also had Monster Mania House inside, featuring the classic monsters exaggerated into pure monsters of evil. A similar experience waited for those who rode confrontation. Instead of entering the ride, guests would be able to walk through the elaborate sets of the rides New York, more like an indoor scare zone set inside confrontation. The final haunted attraction was Jaws the Ride Bloody Waters, which included live actors and even the appearance of Jack himself. The four scare zones featured different sets which would disappear fully while the parade ran and returned after. DJs played songs throughout the park and Bill and Ted would return to parody the year's pop culture. Halloween Horror Nights had evolved and it wouldn't be long until Jack would be back again. The official icons of Halloween Horror Nights had began. What we found out today with uh, seeing people's reaction to Jack is that we're right on the mark. The first signs of Horror Nights 11 were billboards with the words I see you along I-4, eventually revealing a creepy set of eyes staring at you. Universal set out to top their original character icon from the previous year. Once again, Universal had taken the feedback from surveys to influence the event, which I highly recommend you spend the time to fill out when exiting the park this year in 2018. The second most common fear after clowns was being watched, hence the creepy eyes looking down at you from the highway. 
The original icon plan was called Edgar Sawyer, and it would turn out it was Jack all along using a chainsaw. A few months after planning began though, issues began to arise. Universal was bought by the merged Vivendi and Canal Plus, whose main shareholder would be named Edgar. Universal decided to change the name for this reason, and also the surname was actually the same as the main character of the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The replacement idea for the icon was to be Jack's own younger brother named Eddie. Hi, remember me? The name's Eddie. Now my brother's bringing me back, and I'm coming back with a couple of friends. Don't worry, I'm still a little bitter about the whole thing, but we'll square this off one way or another. Eddie would bring the manic of Jack mixed with a high amount of gore and intensity. Unfortunately, the tragic events that occurred in America would change the world and Halloween Horror Nights was no exception. September 11th, 2001 was actually the first dates of auditions for this year's event. Rumours began to spread the event would be cancelled out of respect. It was confirmed around one week later the event would go on. 19 event nights were planned and while the event was still scheduled to run, major changes were happening behind the scenes. The gory, intense icon would not be suitable following the events. Anything with blood or gore or even dust was removed from the event. Names of attractions were changed and the opening ceremonies were cancelled. The ceremony event which began the previous decade was the first night tradition used as a media style press preview. This year, the plan was to have Eddie kill Jack live on stage and become the true Horror Nights icon. Due to the nature and gore of the icon already scaring people driving down I-4, he was cancelled. The I See You slogan was replaced with another, Jack's Back. Jack was played by a different actor this year due to the short notice of the change and Eddie was removed completely from the event. Renamed areas included Bloodbath Underground, which became Ooze Zone. The parade name changed from Festival of the Dead to Nightmares on Parade. One name change, though, would stick. Terrorland became known as Scary Tales. Scary Tales would be a hugely popular house of the year and has now returned multiple times over the following years. Huge sets were constructed inside Soundstage 22 with a concept that all fairy tale characters we knew had morphed and mutated and now wanted revenge. The house featured multiple fairy tales including The Wizard of Oz and Snow White. Scary Tales will once again return this year at Halloween Horror Nights 28, complete with all new repulsive smells. We went back to research material where um, we took Grimm's fairy tales and all of the little morality plays that we hear as kids. We took those characters and as much as our audience has grown up, we took those characters and said, what if they grew up along with our audience? Another house which was toned down and previously set to be the Icon's house was Run, built inside the Earthquake queue line. Originally the most extreme house ever planned. A narrow, twisted dark house where guests are thrown into a game show filled with chainsaws and maniacs including Eddie, the chief of chainsaws. The changes toned down the gore of the house and Eddie was removed completely. The original icon of the event would not even get to be a part of the house planned around him. Not these guys again! This year also saw the release of The Mummy Returns, and a house based around it was constructed. The Mummy Returns, the curse continues. Set inside the temple of the Scorpion King, dangers lurked around every corner. The Superstitions house called Superstitions featured black cats and witches, and the final house was called Pitch Black, located in the same soundstage as Scary Tales. It was unofficially based on the 2000 movie of the same name. Following the event though, the attendance this year was of course down, by as much as 10%. Celebrities such as Britney Spears were brought in to try and attract more people to the event. Though the event was still a success, it required huge changes for it to even be able to happen. Huge changes though would come again the following year. Islands of Adventure, the newest theme park at the Universal Orlando Resort. Five themed islands surround a lagoon. But that is nothing compared to what happens every October and November when the sun sets and a wickedness takes over Universal's Islands of Adventure. 
Following the previous year's issues and attendance decline, Universal were building anticipation as early as April for the next year's event. It wasn't just the event that was suffering, it was the park as a whole. The studio's park attendance was down as much as 10% and the relatively new Islands of Adventure 8%. The new park, which had opened in 1999, had failed to meet its opening expectations. The Halloween event was heavily rumoured to be finding a new home next door at this new park, offering a bigger, fresher experience. Islands of Adventure was a park designed around thrills and thrill rides. Uh, and Halloween Horror Nights, the event itself, is all about thrills and chills. The move was considered somewhat risky though, and a huge change to the larger park for Universal's staple event. Universal though were hoping that by putting the park inside Islands of Adventure, it would force a new generation of people to experience this second park. The event would aim again to be bigger than ever before, with the latest rides and attractions complementing its horror offerings. This meant this year would feature a new location, new experiences, and a brand new icon. The first idea was Cindy, and the park would become her playhouse. Each area of the park would be tied to her and feature the creations from her evil mind. Everything has to connect, so when a guest walks into that space, they feel like they've been transported to this kind of fantasy horror environment that they can believe that for that split second that they are real monsters and they're going to come actually and interact with me. TJ Manorino said the story was as important as the scare. Again though, the concept would change as late as September. A number of child abductions had occurred that summer in the US. The higher ups were concerned about the use of a child as an icon. Not wanting to look unsympathetic, Universal worked hard again on creating a replacement icon. Taking Cindy as the starting point, they looked at her parents. Her obsession with the dead would come from growing up in a mortician's office, which was owned by her father. His story would change slightly, but the inspiration came from a character which used to feature in the parade. This little piggy went to market. This little piggy should have stayed home. This little piggy had roast beef. And this little piggy was all alone. The original name for the new icon was Paul Bearer, and later changed to Dr. Albert Kane, known as the Caretaker. He would lure victims to his Victoria Manor and operate on them to try and find their soul. Originally planned was a cannibal and a voodoo dollhouse, which was scrapped with the icon change. Instead, using for the first time Soundstage 20, Universal Creative could build its largest house yet to fit the character of the caretaker. There's no place with more deathly scares than the caretaker's haunted mansion, Scream House. The house was called Scream House and would take guests on a tour through the caretaker's home. A full house was constructed for the facade to give the illusion of entering it, something they had never done before. The house was filled with caskets, old antiques, and a huge cast of scare actors. The entrance to Islands of Adventure would feature the first scare zone, Ports of Evil. The second scare zone located in the Marvel area was Island Under Siege. The concept being the superheroes had been defeated and you were trapped on the decaying lawless island by the minions of the supervillain Carnage, a popular character from the Spider-Man universe. Spider-Man's weapon was applied throughout and Iron Man's armor had been stolen and was laying around the area. Captain America's blood spattered shield was also nailed to the wall. Villains roamed around and the island uniquely looked like you were in the aftermath of a battle where the heroes just lost. Carnage also had his own house, located just behind Doctor Doom's Fearful, which was a building built just for the event and later used for storage. The house was called Maximum Carnage. You have to navigate through this kind of barbed wire experience um, with gamma radiation and toxic chemicals, target practice with laser beams, um, and all the while these, these evil henchmen and supervillains chasing you, wanting to capture you and make you part of their evil clan. Toon Lagoon was renamed Treaks and Foons. Originally designed as a scare zone for Cindy, the area now featured charming cartoon characters and a large foam machine. A very unique experience. Well, we created a character called uh, a Treak and Froon, which are characters that travel in pairs, and the characters are able to actually hide in the foam and pop out at you and interact with you. So we've littered basically the whole island with foam. The event would also see the return of Scary Tales with Scary Tales 2. 
built in the Popeye queue line. Jurassic Park Island became Jurassic Park Extinction, the concept being that island scientists had created dino-human hybrids. Built inside the Triceratops Trail attraction, the house would be called Evolution. Years before Fear Factor Live opened, the TV show got its own Halloween Horror Nights house, featuring fears and phobias, and included a visit to the returning Rat Lady. It was located in the quick service restaurant Thunderfall's Terrace. Lost Continent was Studio 666, a dance party before heading into Seuss Landing, which was not permitted to have scares, but did have mist applied and the soundtrack played backwards. Bill and Ted found a new home at the Toon Lagoon Amphitheater. RIP tours were offered for the first time and the event was again a huge hit, returning to the attendance numbers previously before the decline. The following year would also introduce the next fan favorite icon. You ought to be in picture. You're wonderful to see. Halloween Horror Nights 13 aimed to take the frights to a new extreme with the introduction of Paolo Ravinsky, or the director. Building on the successful move to the new park, Universal aimed to increase the suspense and focus on an icon which wanted participants to star in his snuff films. Media coverage for the event increased and the pre-sales for the event were at an all-time high. My actors only get one take. A short take. The number of houses at the event was increased to six, the first being Scream House Revisited, again located in Soundstage 20 and a visit again to see the caretaker. The next house was All Night Dying, and the icon house for the year. A large, deserted, drive-in movie theatre would show various horror movies throughout guest travels. The director ushered you through the house featuring many famous horror movie scenes used under fair use. Funhouse of Fear was a clown house, but Jack was not featured within. Jungle of Doom was filled with zombies and ritual killings and sacrifices. The next house was Ship of Screams, located in Popeye's Q-Line and was a pseudo-sequel to SS Frytanic from Halloween Horror Nights 8. The final house though would go on to be iconic. Psycho Scarapy would be located inside the Jurassic Park Discovery Center and take you into an insane asylum. Scare Zones also returned and the common thread between them was the use of number 13 which was displayed in every house and scare zone. The event also for the first time featured the music of the Midnight Syndicate. Bill and Ted would return, but this time with a new writer, Michael Aiello, taking over the reins of the show after writing it with J. Michael Roddy previously. My first gig at Horror Nights was actually um, in a house called Hotel Hell. I remember it was the coolest job ever. I loved it. I was inside a washing machine, <laughs> and I popped out of a washing machine, and I loved it. I loved it. it uh, I was hooked. Aiello had previously acted in the show was actually a scare actor inside the original SS Frytanic. Other firsts this year included the first time Express Passes were sold. The director was another huge hit, yet the subject matter was controversial. However, the media coverage proved a success for Universal Creative, and the director became one of the most loved icons ever created. Central Florida Parks was still struggling to recover from the tourism industry decline following the events of 9-11. Halloween Horror Nights was still growing though and returned in 2004. Of course, the event was again bigger than ever. Seven houses, one show, the return of the parade, and four highly themed scare zones. Not only this though, the event would use both Universal Parks for the first time ever. One ticket was required to visit both parks. Backstage areas opened to travel between them and areas were closed off which were not used. A huge undertaking. Badumch. Field of Scream Scare Zone would be over two acres inside, located between the two parks and use real corn. The issues with this though was unexpected. Hurricanes. Florida had received multiple hurricanes during the year, four of which hit central Florida. The growing corn was damaged, but most of it was salvageable and used to create the scare zone. Another large scare zone was located between the parks and called Fright Yard. The seven houses were also revealed for the first time on the internet. Another first for the year was house specific queue line videos. Castle Vampire built inside a soundstage was so huge the queue line video filmed was around eight minutes long. The huge house was detailed with multiple sets and actors within. 
Next up was Horror in Wax and Howgate Prison. Both located in Soundstage 20, Howgate featured the electric chair effect, which has returned many times since. Ghost Town, set in the town of Lightning Gold, took you through a western setting swallowed up by a huge lightning storm. This year did not actually feature an icon, though reportedly a headless horseman style character was planned. The house, Horror Night Nightmares, inside the former Hercules building featured past icons including Jack, the caretaker, the director, and even Eddie. The Treaks and Foons characters would return in Disorientorium, located in the Carnage Warehouse, and again, attendance for the event continued to grow. The following year, Universal would aim to increase the immersion of the event. Every single aspect of the 2005 event would take guests on a journey into a new world. Everything inside would be linked together like never before. Originally using the two-part concepts, two icons would be created. Fate, representing the studio side, where games of chance will be played, and the islands park, which will be represented by darkness. Rather than this concept though, Universal would use the tale of the Terra Queen. The land was ruled by the Terra Queen, who was planned as the event's icon. A never-ending cycle of sacrifice would play out over the event. A show named the Terra Throne would be located at the entrance with a scare zone called Terra Guard Run. Every single area of the event would be connected. The theme was greenlit, but during production, some of the executives who had greenlit it left Universal. New executives came in and knowing the event boosted the overall attendance for the park each year, didn't think it met expectations. Fears were that the Terra Queen was not scary enough, and a new icon was selected. The Terra Queen, however, would remain since it was so integrated to the event's story and became the event's mascot. The new icon would be named the Storyteller. Tired from his adventures, the little boy settled into his bed and slept and slept and slept. Wasn't that a good story? Dear, you look a little warm. <laughs> Sweet dreams. The Storyteller presents tales of terror at Universal's all-new Halloween Horror Nights. An evil older lady who was presented as the narrator of the whole world story. The opening ceremonies featured the Terra Queen and her minions. On the final night of the event, she herself was sacrificed and the monks proclaimed she would return in 15 years time. Two years from now in 2020. Houses this year included Demon Cantina, the school, and the now much loved Body Collectors. Just like Psychoscarapy, located in the Discovery Center, the body collector's house was huge. A Victorian-like area used to produce victims for the opening show by creatures called the Collectors. Rumored to have been created by the inspiration of the Buffy the Vampire episode, Hush. Terra Mines was the first house inside Poseidon's Fury, walking the same path as the attraction. This was the first time though every 12th guest inside was given a helmet featuring a flashlight as they entered into the mine. The helmets were controlled by sensors and the lights would turn on and off automatically throughout. The storyteller's icon house was where evil hides, located in the sound stages. The house told the tale of a killer within a suburban house and featured the storyteller. The sets and events were packed away as usual, but this time once again a new era was on the horizon for Halloween Horror Nights. Be sure to subscribe to join the expedition to continue this journey through the icon years of Halloween Horror Nights, and we will see you next time. Good evening, moviegoers.